Hey, welcome back to the leveling guide. This is our sixth episode going from 180 to 200. So right at 180, I'm going to prioritize getting my society initiation done. That way I can get started on doing society tasks. Hitting master in your society opens up an extra aug gem, which is one of the main forms of endgame progression. Plus with each rank promotion, you'll get some quality XP and some gear pulls. You just want to make sure when you finish your tasks that you give all the ribbons you earn to the commendations officer. So after buying a few dispel gems with the society tokens we earned, I'm going to head over to Rinthed Tentacle Weapons. This is a group quest that if you're on Levistus is usually run around 4.45pm Pacific every day. The Levistus version is custom content that's increased difficulty from the retail version. Nothing to worry about, it's not something where you're going to like burden people by being new. I highly recommend you just go. I've soloed this without melee D four times, including in the league with our more gimped builds. Uh, two of those videos are on YouTube if you want to check them out. One thing I didn't realize until recently is that if you die, you can just portal recall, which uh, makes it way less daunting. And one more thing, you probably want to save these turn-ins in your inventory until you're 200 plus and luminance flagged, which we'll get into in a second. Alright, and getting back to our typical leveling content with Liberation of Aziz. One of the easier legendary quests, and one you can learn right away, just have to pull three levers in this dungeon. The first six quests I'm going to go over, you can do in any order, and I call these the easy block of legendary quests. So just in case you didn't know, legendary quests are ones that reward XP, luminance, but also a legendary key, which is going to help you get some gear early. Next running through Count Feanor's Amulet in Graveyard, a nice quick easy one you definitely want to get acquainted with. And when he takes a bath, so do the Wisps, so I wouldn't bother clearing those. Purging the Corruption is mostly a melee D check, so if you're decent on your melee D numbers, this should be okay for you. And realistically, you should have at least trained melee D. I've been playing without it just for fun, but it's not really something people do. Then I'm headed to Gurog Creation in Frozen Valley, and it would be nice to get familiar with this little area because we'll be coming back at 200 for Luminous Flag. Logging out in this corner is going to despawn all the ones that we're chasing, making it much easier. Dream Reaver, this is probably the hardest of these quests. The other being Mouth, which we covered in the 150 video. The thing about this quest though is there are like doorways before each boss that you can use the environment to good effect. D Wayne, this is what I would recommend more as a group quest for this range. Later in the endgame, if you have a more complete character or you have max level summons, then that would be the time to, you know, solo it. I happen to have said summons thanks to some early gear, which is a wise set, so that's gonna allow me to take on things. Maybe a little earlier than I would choose to, just for damage and time purposes more than difficulty, really. If you want to see some gameplay without summons, there's a lot on my channel. I'd recommend checking out the 30 Legendary Quests Without Gear video. Those jumps are random, by the way. <laughs> like one of a few patterns, so I hope you weren't trying to study them too hard. Next, I'm headed up these ramps in the Rented Plains. Gonna do a few quests while I'm out here. Fear Factory, this is one of the easiest legendary quests overall, not a ton to say, you just talk to these shadow dudes next to the illusions. Make sure you talk to the NPC at camp before coming out here, because you need to for them to count. And from the surface of Fear Factory, I'm taking the portal directly across from it and up the path to Shroud of Emotion. And to me the difficulty of this was always a little overhyped, you definitely can solo it in the range, it's more can you get there and can you stay dispelled. The answer to both of those things is yes, the void boss is most likely to kill you, and if not, you'll probably get taken out by a ring in the hallway. 
and it really helps to have a soulbound weapon. I'd probably want to have that before coming up here just to take care of these bosses in a timely fashion. But now, nah, if you're 180 to 200 and you're sort of new to legendary questing, you're not familiar with the Rim the Plains, I would call for a group probably. And there's usually players who need the necklace and are down to go with you. So when I surface, I'm gonna. Oops, like, no, I'm not. But what if I did though? So that's Rent the Recall, that is the hardest quest in the game. I have a bunch of solo videos on my channel, but for now I'm headed to Illusion Assault, which is right over here. Illusion Assault's really straightforward. The wiki's gonna tell you the lever order, but you just wanna avoid the center of these rooms because they'll cast Volan on you and hug the walls for the most part. boss room so if you drop a summon coming through portal space and then move back in the southwest corner you're gonna avoid aggro from the rock throwers up top making this whole fight a lot easier now awesome looks like i got the one cycle here it's always a little spooky getting through that door without melee d I'm going to surface straight ahead and I'm going to run pretty much straight ahead to this tower in the distance. Cool, and this is the end of days. So after the group runs of Rent the Weapons, people are going to head to Illusion Assault first, then head here. So in theory, you could get these done every night. Just follow the group to the surface portal when Rented Weapons finishes. And from end of day service, I'm headed to this ground crystal nearby for rented training. It's generally one of the easier legendary quests, but a couple things. So the rooms you get are random, and you're going to want to remember the color of these portals, so it might make sense to type them somewhere, like in chat. And who doesn't love a jump puzzle? Are you telling me you're one of these freaks who dislikes jumping in a video game? Nah, it's crazy. But that's something I hear is like, oh no, I hate jumping, I don't want to do these jumps in VR. Nah, nah stop it. Stop. <laughs> but I understand it's not that common in MMOs. AC does it really well. Not gonna lie, this one leaves a little to be desired. I like the one with the blinking platforms in here better. Knights can't turn everything in. The Shroud of Emotion necklace is gonna be like the best in slot outside of Gauntlet Gear, so I would say that's what you're really after, and doing the rest of these rented quests would be optional. Then we gotta head to Neftet for Escape, also known as Janthef's Release. Main tip for escape would be hug the sides of these hallways to avoid the void spells. In these larger rooms, I like to jump to minimize my chances of getting hit. If you're wondering how I know the timing for these, I don't. The Voidcasters run on their own cycle, so it's random when you enter the dungeon. Otherwise, it's just kind of read and react, try to see which direction they're facing quickly if you can. And there are two different Void spells that can hit you. One is a DOT that you want to dispel, and the other is just direct damage. Alright, and then back in Neftet camp, I'm going to drop some forbidden knowledge really quick. So if you get a scrying rod, select it, type slash UB space property dump. You're going to pull up some actual hacks, this is the utility belt menu. And so if you've seen the purple text where it says 44125, that's the number you're looking for. 126 and 125 are the first and second spots respectively, that's what I'm looking for. If I didn't get one of those first two spots, I just give the scrying rod back to the garbage barrel sitting outside the tent and try again. Just get a new scrying rod with a new set of numbers. 
The XP here I think is on par with Repaired Shadow Stone, so pretty solid. But if you're 200 plus and Lumen is flagged, it's going to be one of the easiest 10k Lumen in the game. So if you're like struggling to do other, you know, legendary quests early, you can do just this part for 10k Lumen, even if you don't do the rest with Slave Master. Slave Master Wiki will tell you these exact chords, but I'm really only interested in pulling up devices at the first or second spots. Alright, this is really only for the super adventurous or people who are trying to level as quickly as possible. Gonna go ahead with more castle flagging. There's huge XP there to be had, so if you're pretty well equipped or a little crazy, you can go for it. Getting the trials done for a sort of business, and if you want a complete walkthrough on the more castle trials, I have that on my YouTube as well. Whole key to the fire trials is having your camera angled up like this. If you try to do it with the default camera angle, you're probably gonna get destroyed. A lot of people are like, bro, I need a fire rare for this. No, you don't. All you have to do is dispel fire volants and not get hit by more than one skull at a time because they won't one shot you unless you're fire volant. Nice clean hit list and when you finish a portal opens up you don't actually have to take it, it's closer to just run. This trial is a lot easier, you can't actually get volant, so as long as you're decent at dodging this pattern, what it's asking of you is pretty straightforward. Got this done without damage as well, not bad. Cool, and last trial, not bad. You're just gonna wanna consult the wiki because it's like a code deciphering thing. And just watch the casting. You might want to bring a group. It's clearly not a YouTube viewer, this guy. <laughs> this is a fun fight though, especially to do at lower levels. Alright, once Lord R takes a bath, I'm gonna head straight from the throne room to Oubliette. This is a cool and pretty unique quest, but more importantly, the XP values on it are just ridiculous, so if you're able to do this daily, you're gonna go from 180 to 200 really quick, and uh, I was able to in the league. And uh, for a normal 180 character with melee D and everything, I would say the difficulty is not insane, it's just getting here and a bunch of setup between the flagging just to get into the castle and then doing the trials, which a lot of people struggle with. That fight with Castle Lord R is optional for this, but it's its own legendary quest and uh, pretty good XP, so I'd recommend doing it if you can. Boss here is just a wall kill with summons or melee, if you have neither there is a way to pull him into this room. You can shut some doors to kind of isolate them, but you want to be really careful about pulling these blinded apparitions, the hollow ghosts in here. Hey, a cloak drop. It was a good day. It was a cloak kind of day. Let me know if you want a cloak, by the way. I've given away a bunch. I probably still have like 30 on a meal. Yeah, ridiculous XP. Monstrous. I'm not using my XP trinket either because of the gear setup, so would be even more. And if you got the ring from Lord R, you can turn into Antony as well. 
And finally, we're 200. It's time to Luminance Flag. So if you remember the spot I told you for Garak Creation, we're coming right back there. But instead, we're going straight up these ramps all the way to the top and into a portal. Stam to health during portal space, by the way. A little trick you can do while casting. Before taking on this boss, you probably either want to clear the mobs that are chasing you or just relog to drop the aggro. Make sure to loot that green triangle, and then optionally, I'm going to grab the scroll for Bloodstone Investigation. Alright, let's get out of here. A lot of soldiers, too spooky. Just a reminder, this whole time I'd be trying to get those society promotions done up to Master. And as usual, here's a recap of some of my most recommended quests for the range. Keeping in mind that RTW rented weapons can and should be done every night if you can. You get Illusion Assault and End of Days alongside that. Killing Lord Arn guards of Menelesh, plus getting that ring and the Gear Knight thing in Town Network, big percentage base XP, don't forget about those. Alright boys, that's gonna do it for the leveling guide. We are 200 plus, in a society, luminance flagged, and ready to take on the endgame. Thanks for joining, it's been awesome. Um, when I looked around YouTube at the start, the farthest anyone had gotten on a leveling guide is level 10. And after dozens of hours of recording, editing, making thumbnails, a bunch of behind the scenes stuff, I'm glad we were able to go just a little deeper than that. So as far as the end game, I definitely have content planned for you guys, but for now I'm going to take, I think, a well deserved break. If you have any questions whatsoever about the guide or AC in general, just let me know in the comments, I'll try to answer them. Thank you again for watching, hope to catch everyone on the next video or series, and most importantly, have an awesome rest of your week.